Welcome to a podcast on marketing. I'm your host, Jordan Ogren, and this is a podcast where we talk about marketing. First question, who are you and what do you do? Hey, I'm Justin Simon. I run content at Metadata, and I also am the uh, founder, I guess you would say, of Content Repurposing Roadmap, a course that helps people repurpose and distribute their content. Awesome. And we'll definitely touch on that uh, probably later in the show. But first question I like to, apart from who you are, is what are you obsessed with lately? Like what things in marketing, business are you just geeking out about? Yeah, so uh, I'm sure we'll dive into it. But I think the thing I've been geeking out more uh, probably in the last six to eight months and really in the last three months has been distribution and repurposing around content. And I think that's a, a huge part. If anybody follows me on LinkedIn, they, they're getting that probably every day. Um, <laughs> but I think for me, it really comes down to uh, necessity. Uh, and that's where a lot of that came from was I came from a, a company where I had a small and it was a small team, but I had a team, uh, a content team that I ran with writers and videographers and, and social. And I came over to metadata and it was me. And so uh, I had to really think through what was kind of ne necessary to actually get done and what things weren't necessary to get done, what was priority and how do you prioritize what you have, especially as a content team of one. Uh, you, we, the idea was trying to like make our content and make our impact feel bigger than just what, well, at the time when I started a three-person marketing team could actually handle. Okay. Yeah, I feel a lot of things, a lot of good things can come out of kind of scrappiness where you don't have the resources and you have to get more creative. So you kind of alleviate it to some points. You had a small team, you're the only content person, but like why is repurposing content so important? Why are you on this mountaintop, you know, preaching the repurposing uh, strategy? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to getting more out of what you have. And a lot of it came out of experiences of me working really, really hard and planning and strategy to come up with whether it was a, a really good event or a really good webinar, or a really good piece of con blog content, traditional kind of content, only to have that thing launch and then instantly have to move on to the next thing. Hmm. And instantly the team or the group or, you know, even from, up, okay, what's next? And it's like, we just spent, you know, so much time, effort, energy creating this thing. Isn't that still good? Like, even mm -hmm. six months down the road, isn't this still good content? Like, we thought it was the best thing in the world four months ago, and now we never talk about it. Why is that? And so it just becomes, you know, kind of what I've talked about is like this hamster wheel effect where you never get ahead. You're just constantly creating new stuff. And I think that's one of the things that can get confusing is it's not like, I'm not saying don't create new things because you're creating stuff off of what you already have. Um, but it's really creating less of those core, and I've sort of talked about it like cornerstone pieces of content where you ever feel like you're constantly spinning your wheels all the time. Hmm. Yeah, no, I feel that as someone who I write a daily email, so I'm constantly coming up with new ideas. It's short, but yeah, mm -hmm. there is that hamster wheel, and it's almost like uh, there's a, there's, there's some pleasure or something, reason we stay on the hamster wheel. Like we just enjoy this, the pain or something of always having to think of new ideas where you're obviously providing a clear, better path where it, like you said, it's not, not creating, like you'll take something I'm guessing and kind of put maybe a new spin on it, a little bit new messaging, but you're always grabbing from something you've created. So your investment in content is just 4x 10x whatever that is which makes a ton of sense all right i just i had to ask that question but i do usually ask one question that starts uh kind of the, the whole podcast is how do you define marketing and what is the job that marketing should get done Ooh, that's a good one um at its most simplest form i think especially for where i'm at right now it's um it's all about attention marketing's job is to grab attention Hmm. In the in the uh, we are in the economy of attention right now. Uh, a, mar a B2B SaaS company is competing with Netflix for somebody's attention, and it's competing with a D2C brand for somebody's attention, hmm. um, and it's competing with your kids for attention and your wife <laughs> and you know everything, right? Sure. So everything we're in this sort of, uh, especially in the last couple of years, where everybody was at home and we're just kind of like there's not. The, the usual things that kind of distract us or get us out or what, you know, we kind of were like 
boxed in. And so like the attention became even more focused, especially on screens and online. And I think at the end of the day, marketing's job is to get attention, build awareness, tell a story, and then be able to pass that off. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Awareness is key. Do you think, so something I've heard a lot about is like, obviously you have to get attention first. You have to have awareness. Do you think the struggle is in getting attention or retaining attention in today's uh, content crazy economy? That's not just about getting it. It takes a step further. You have to retain. There has to be resonance more than just reach. Do you agree with that sentiment or do you, do you think it's all about getting attention? I mean, consistency is key. So the the best marketers, personal, the best companies do it consistently. Hmm. So I think, yes, it's, it's get about that. getting it. But I think it's, you know, the retention part of it to me would be much more like showing up every day and I'm seeing this person's hmm. really good content every single day or this brand's, you know, content. It's always so helpful. Like every time, why is every time it's in my <laughs> inbox, I'm like, oh, this is gold. I can't miss it. Like we all have those experiences. Um, with different creators or different brands. And so I think that is the goal of marketing in my mind is whether it's a personal brand or whether it's a company, whatever I'm creating, I want someone to, to be happy that they're receiving that piece of content or want to, mm -hmm. to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So it's almost every day, every new time it's getting that attention again and ways you can do that like you said, is showing up every day, being a resource people really kind of look forward to, whether that's actually having very valuable content or actually just writing in a way that's engaging that I enjoy to, or speaking if it's a, not written. I do a lot of written forms, so that comes to mind. Okay, that's a good definition for marketing. How then do you take that definition? And obviously you may not be someone who looks at other marketing and kind of labels it good or bad, and you can argue it's always in the mind of the perceiver, but like, how do you delineate between that was good marketing or that was bad marketing? For, for me, if I can't tell I'm being marketed to, it's good marketing. Okay. Uh, I like that. So, um, I mean, once anybody who's been in, in marketing long enough, you just see it everywhere and everything, you know what I mean? Like you just start to see it in everything you're doing. And I like to reverse engineer a lot of different things. And so I I'm reverse engineering, you know, random emails that come in and like, Oh, why did I, why did I open that? You know, because yeah. uh, I delete a lot of stuff. Why did I open that one? Or what, what hook made me want to read that next line and different things like that. So I think if I can't, tell I'm being marketed to it's a it's a good one um but then also yeah like what keeps me interested just as a consumer you know what what keeps what piques my interest what made me want to move forward what made me want to type in that brand name what made me want to check out their website or their product or eventually buy I think those type of things um you know we have to be cognizant of moving forward because that's ultimately what moved if it moved me forward maybe there's a way i can think about it repackage it and use it to move somebody forward in my funnel as well hmm. do you think that's unique to you or do you think a lot of marketers also because i do that as well but i'm not sure if i'm just like a rarity as well or do you think a lot of people that are in marketing think like that of why did i read all the way through this like like what was the uh, reason or i think that i think it's probably not as rare, uh, if I'm being honest. I think, <laughs> uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I would, <laughs> me and you were the only ones doing that. Uh, <laughs> but I do, I, so I do, I do, uh, yeah, it'd make me feel good. No, I think, I think it's something that, I'll say this, I think it's something that good marketers do. Hmm. And that's what, uh, if you want to be a good marketer, you should strive for. Yeah, I think just in general, though, of life, reverse engineering is a, it's a good mental model for anything in life, like just using that, uh, that kind of framework. What is something you believe very strongly in, and I'm guessing I know the answer, that, you know, it's a hill you're willing to die on in marketing that you preach to many people? Uh, I'm not, I, I won't throw the, uh, the, um, repurposing one or two, uh, I'll throw a different one just to be, uh, you know, throws, I think story matters way more. I mean, way more than people give it credit for, mm. um, and being able to have a consistent story that you're telling over time and being able to show how you as a brand, you as a company are helping people transform their actual lives matters way more than, product, feature, benefit, 
any of that stuff being able to tie into somebody's larger story um and narrative matters way more than most people probably give it credit for Hmm. what are some examples that come to your mind of companies that get this or that are doing it well I mean, one of my favorite companies that does it, they also teach it. I love StoryBrand from Donald Miller. I think, you know, they do an awesome job at being able to do being able to do this. Um, it's actually something we're starting to roll out here at Metadata as well. Uh, it's trying to, like, pull off a uh, strategic narrative here. And mm -hmm. so I think those are, um, those are I mean, I'm literally experiencing it, um, but then also being able to see it through that lens is, is something that I've always kind of looked at. I think, I think it's easier said than done. I'll say that. Like as somebody who's tried to do this at former companies, and we're I know we're going to try to do it here too. Is it is hard to get everybody at the company on board, saying the same language from the top down, and meaning it and owning it. That is a very mm -hmm. difficult task. Yeah, definitely. I think just something that comes to my mind is like people at parties, like a lot of people tell stories. It's difficult to tell a story in a way that like grips, you know, the whole half of the room you're in. Whereas and you just start telling the story and you're like, damn it, John's telling, you know, another kind of crappy story. It's going to go way too long. It's going to focus on like. So I think with like building the story, it is very difficult for a company because you have to nail like what really does the customer care about and what you really stand for rather than just kind of putting plateaus that just don't really mean much. But yeah, I, I also like Donald Miller. I really enjoy kind of the strategic narrative, Andy Raskin. Um, you got D, DGMG who wrote the whole founder mm -hmm. storybook. And I really do believe that the story is a strategy. Anybody can duplicate your feeds and your speeds, but uh, Microsoft can't duplicate the story. They're too big. They're just different if they want to like mimic. So yeah, I totally am aligned with the story. And that's why storytelling for marketers, I think is a skill that goes under preached or uh, just not as valued as I think it should be of how to tell a um, story start to end, start at, you know, the shark biting somebody and then retell to how it got there. All those things that are just critical mm -hmm. um, in storytelling. Now, that's something you believe. What is something you believe that other marketers, maybe that is a story, but that they disagree with you on, that you kind of say or you get in a lot of, I don't want to say arguments, but just quarrels where it's like, oh, you believe this, but I don't believe that. Um, I don't think it's a ton of quarrels. I think I could potentially get into quarrels with some people. So uh, <laughs> probably like SEO right now mm. a little bit, like SEO as like the level of importance. And I there's so much nuance with this. Um, but just to give some back, so I, I came, my, my real content sort of like foundation was in SEO. I taught myself SEO, like, you know, early, not early days, but like, you know, uh, a decade ago and kind of built my way up to it. And all of my sort of like content marketing foundation was built around SEO and bringing people in and had a ton of success with that. Um, you know, really driving millions of of viewers to pages through SEO and, and, and doing that in a successful way. Where I think it's changed is people are trying to, like I said, in the attention world, it's a lot of it comes down to intent. And so you can't build a brand necessarily off SEO. You can be helpful to me and I can search for something and I can get my answer and thanks that blog helped me. Um, but that alone isn't going to bring me affinity to what you're doing i can't it's, it's a it's a longer play a harder um especially in b2b and that's the other thing i'll say especially in b2b it's just a longer pull it's i, I came from a b2c world where it was you know free trial and you you know write a post post instantly tied into the problem or feature that our product had free trial okay cool i was looking to do that anyway i'll try it for free and you'd hook mm -hmm. them in and, and, and do that sort of thing so with uh with b2b it doesn't work that way you know what i mean there's nothing to like yeah. really tie that into like a high level purchase so mm -hmm. i think that's probably the the biggest one where i would maybe have some conflict or just disagreement with people is the the level and stage of which of what that importance is because i think a lot of times especially there's good seo and bad just like everything there's good and bad versions of that too and i think on the bad side of it a, a lot of companies and a lot of 
um, people get sold sort of a bill of goods in terms of, hey, we'll help you rank and we'll help you do this and da da da. And the keywords are meaningless. They don't really, you might rank number one for X, Y, and Z. It doesn't really move the needle. It doesn't really drive any purchases, demos, et cetera. You're just ranking for keywords. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm totally in that camp as well. I not have done the extensive research or like uh, learning in SEO. Um, quickly on, I kind of just found out or thought, okay, this is very tactical and tactical is needed. Um, but like, I just, it's going to be a fad. It's going to get oversaturated. Let me try to learn the basics of marketing. And you're like a, the second, third person who's kind of not took a shot, but just pointed out that maybe SEO isn't what we, you know, preach it to be, or it's not, you know, the one silver bullet that you can use rank high and people just start, you know, buying loads of your product. I agree with you. And I enjoyed your from experience, uh, how you kind of broke that down. So what is, what is a failure or mistake you made in marketing that you look back on now and maybe you're not thankful for it, but like, you're like, okay, that helped me get here. Or I was, that was needed in my journey. Absolutely. Uh, so when I took over, when I took over my content team at my previous company, um, I had never done anything in the, at all in the social, like, media corporate social media space at all like i had no clue what i was doing um and so you know the first thought in my mind was like oh we were writing all these blogs let's just post the blogs on social and we'll do that multiple times a day and we'll you know we'll see how that works well anybody who's listening know that you know that doesn't it's not really how it works anymore so like that was probably a fine strategy eight or ten years ago but trying to do that in 2019 was a was a not a great idea hmm. but what i'll say is if i that was just step one of learning social and what it meant to run so corporate social media so i figured that out was able to do it work with our social media coordinator realized what wasn't working and a was able to kind of work through that and and make it work eventually to to really try to put a separate because uh, essentially what we're doing is trying to take our SEO rate, top ranking SEO posts and just post them on social, <laughs> you know, yeah. the learning there is that people who are searching for things have different, a much different intent than people who are just mindlessly scrolling on their phone. Hmm. And so coming up with the idea of trying to figure out, okay, we've got these two different content streams that we need to create and get that out. Um, so yeah, that was my biggest probably one of my biggest failures in the last five years and one of the biggest learnings too that honestly helps me uh today as well nice nice I, th I feel like that's a good one to like have i feel there could be a lot worse mistakes i uh personally lost i'm sure there that. are <laughs> that was yeah, just right. mind. <laughs> but no no that's good though i i also made i think it's a typical mistake you just make when you start posting to social you grab you know into that content role where it's like you know, you don't think to context swap in a sense of like what should be on this stream rather than our blog SEO kind of stream. So, yeah, no, that's that's a common mistake. I just uh, I'm always like interested to see like if there's some big ones. I lost like point one point six terabytes of information on a hard drive one time not backed up. So, yeah, that's my uh, one of my biggest failures. still trying to figure out what the lesson was in it. But um, <laughs> so you talk a lot about repurposing. You talk a lot about distribution is also kind of they said content is king. I think you're, you would be behind the thing of distribution is king, repurposing is king. What are some great ways to get better at distributing content per se, probably in this um, conversation? I think the number one thing people can do is plan to distribute their content. I think it's the number one thing that's holding people back from actually distributing and repurposing their content mm. in a consistent way. Um, you can have a goal to do that. You can really, really want to, um, but unless you have a plan to actually do that and start to build, build a habit, build a muscle, I sort of talk about it in the course as like going to the gym. And so if you just expect to, A, you might think, okay, I'm going to start doing repurposing. I'm going to go to the gym every single day and I'm, I'm going to repurpose. I swear I'm going to do this. <laughs> You, you you're gonna burn out because you don't really have a plan you're just going to the gym and you're you're you know lifting weights you're doing cardio you're doing it all but then you just you don't know what you're really doing um mm. versus if you start small and maybe go 10 minutes a day but then go every day for 10 minutes and say okay i'm gonna do this on this day this on th this day this on th you might start really really small but then six months from now you've built this muscle and built this mm. habit 
to where you can actually perform consistently. And so that's what I've started to do with content. And, and literally I try to practice what I preach. And so uh, usually on a weekend, like Saturday or Sunday, I will sit down and I'll try to plan out at least the five posts that are gonna go out for the week. Cause I try to post five days a week. Um, on LinkedIn. And so I'll actually try to plan those out and figure out what I want to do and what I'm going to repurpose and how I'm going to figure out what those themes are. And then during the week, I just grab from the document and put them on social. Mm -hmm. And then I can spend the time interacting. I don't have to every day wake up and think, uh, I know I'm supposed to post. No one's supposed to write something. What is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> and the other thing with the plan is, is is auditing what you have, understanding what you already have, your best hits, what topics do you talk about that people comment the most on, what are people most interested in, what email do you send that people open the most when you write about it. Um, having an either a literal list of the URLs, if it's blogs or a, a topic list, if it's a, other type of content that you're writing, and then be able to come back to that and say, okay, I'm always talking about these things and they're really, really good. What other topics, what other angles do I have on that that I could repurpose? And again, it's it's not that it's not new. It's just you're not having to continually try to reinvent the wheel at the beginning. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. I feel that can be an answer for so many things is just to plan. Um, because, yeah, if you don't plan, it's going to be, you know, hit or miss if you actually do the district if you actually distribute and um yeah no I, I think that's a good that's a good tip to kind of just start and i think a thing with a plan you call it a process is you can't refine or optimize a process until you have it so like you said you might start small but you can eventually get that process to be big enough where you're repurposing one you know podcast a week to to different like TikTok, and you're really kind of contextually swapping correctly to that platform so yeah i think that's key just planning in general as you take a step back to go three steps forward at a at a quicker pace. And I, so I as, think one, yeah. one thing I'll say too on that, because I think that's key is is understanding, like understanding, are you going to do TikTok? Are you mm -hmm. going to do YouTube? Are you going to do shorts? Are you going to do LinkedIn? Even just understanding the basics of platform and what you are and aren't going to do relieves so much stress off of you because then you can say, no, I've already decided, like, I know there's this whole thing over here where people are talking what I should be doing and need to be doing, but I've decided I'm going to do this, this, and this. And until I can figure that out, I'm not even going to worry about that over there. Yeah. Yeah, strategy is almost more about what you don't do uh, than you do. I'm just a quoting book reference guide. Keep walking <laughs> and just know. Um, I see on your your LinkedIn and your job experience, you have quite an extensive kind of writing. It seems you did a lot in the Detroit area. You're still in the Detroit area. So like uh, I'm in La I'm in the Lansing area, but yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah around there, Michigan, right? Yep. But yep. I noticed that you have a lot of writing experience. Like, what did how did that inform improve your marketing, or did you were you always a marketer before and you just wrote for like sports and stuff because it was fun? Like, in, how have how are you a better marketer? I guess a question is how are you a better marketer today because of that mm -hmm. writing experience that you had. That's a really, really interesting question. I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that or ever, even ever talked about this, but I was just thinking about it um, not that long ago. So I don't write. I used to write for several different sort of publications, uh, including SB Nation's publication. Um, and I did all of that for fun. That was for fun. So I started at like my... When I went to school, I didn't know what I wanted to do like a lot of people. And so I was just like, eh, I'm pretty good at writing. I guess I'll <laughs> try that. Uh, so I didn't really know what that meant. Like, is that a, everyone? Is that journalism? Are you going to be a journalist? Are you going to, you know, like that's all there was <laughs> uh, back then. Um, so anyway, I stumbled upon, like I got an internship, stumbled upon marketing. So I was doing that at the same time I was, uh, was writing for, um, on, on like the sports side and what I learned and what it actually taught me about marketing was I had to learn how to market myself in the articles I was doing and all of like, it was really like a personal brand and stuff before that got like mm. really to be a thing was like doing a personal brand. Like I was, 
you know, creating content on Twitter and talking, interacting with the community and trying to, you know, pull people in and do all of those type of things that now are just kind of happenstance. But I was doing all of that in 2012, talking about football. Um, Mm. And so like now a lot of those learnings have really just transferred. Now it's not, I'm not talking about football on Twitter. I'm just talking about marketing on LinkedIn and I'm doing the exact same, you know what I mean? Like it's very, very similar to what I was doing back then. It's just a transfer of basically energy and, and time and topic. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. The stuff you do years and years prior to, you have no clue what it's uh, building, crescendoing to. Do you find that you're, um, you said you did it because you were good at writing. You felt that you were good at writing. How much do you find that, I'm guessing, unless you just like stopped writing, you probably still are pretty good at writing. Like, how have you found that impacts your ability to market that you can write well or maybe even just do business? Do you notice that it's like this is easier because I can write well or is it just so second nature you don't even notice the benefits and implications that are drawn? Yeah, I mean, I think so. There's probably two sides of this coin. One is massive imposter syndrome where I like don't think I'm a good writer at all. And I and I see other people and it's like, oh my gosh, like I don't even know what I'm doing. And then I read like something that's bad marketing or just bad or just bad, poorly written, poorly communicated. I'm like, oh, I know way more than I think. So I'm probably <laughs> somewhere in the middle there, right? Like I, I'm probably better than, better than maybe average, but you know, not as good as somebody who does this all the time. Um, but yeah, I think like writing, but I think it's communi- communicating, being able to communicate effectively. So what we're doing now is communicating effectively and we're just doing it in a different way. Um, I think written word is still super powerful and it has uh, a ton of, uh, a ton of, you know, leg room and, and ability to, to do things. But I think, you know, now more than ever, it's video, it's podcasting, mm-hmm. audio, it's those mediums. So I think while I don't write as much as I do now, one of the reasons why I do write on LinkedIn almost every day is to keep that muscle (laughs) of writing. Mm -hmm. Um, because I went from, uh, doing it as a job where literally my job was to write content and write blogs and write copy for websites every single day, uh, to Mm -hmm. not having to do that as much anymore. Now that's kind of offloaded. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, just an easy way for me to still be able to do that. Yeah, well, I'm a huge writer, so I'm just itching to defend the writing. But um, I feel from just what you said, like, I think you can communicate so well because your LinkedIn writing, because I really believe all writing is, it's just thinking. You have to think to write well. You can't write and then think. So I develop my thoughts. So I feel the way you communicate and how, how well the articulated you are is because of your writing. And it's like focusing on communicating is great. You can probably become great at it, but I find really well thought out people are usually writers, whether it's in their free time or whatever. Um, And I'm really firmly trying to figure out like, how does that play in a marketer's kind of toolkit? And is it one of the most important? Because I think thinking is super important and the more you write, the better uh, you think. So I just wanted to see if that plays heavily into your uh, kind of like where you're at now, but obviously it's cool to see how you've kind of shift and, you know, been very adaptable of where you've been rather than always just sticking with, um, the medium or, or whichever. Awesome. Well, I like to end this podcast with three questions. It was two literally a few episodes ago, but now it's three. Um, so first question is what is one thing in the last one to two, three, four years you've changed your mind on in regards to marketing? So I ble- I believe the Gary V model put out bajillion piece of content. I now believe quality over quantity. Like what is one of your beliefs you've changed? Um, I think it's, uh, we touched on it, but I think it really is the SEO driver of, of content. And I think if you'd have asked me four years ago, I would have been, you know, why are you even writing a blog if it doesn't drive SEO value? Mm. Like what's the, what's the point? And I think in some cases that's probably still true unless you are going to actually redistribute and get it in front of people in, in yeah. that sort of thing. Um, of but I was, I, I was all in on the SEO bandwagon and all in on, you know, that was the way to do content marketing. And now content marketing has just exploded into means so much more than just writing blogs and, and getting it captured by Google. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that, that you came back to it and you added a little bit more on just the whole kind of SEO. Yeah. I do believe it started 
uh, content marketing was mainly SEO. But now, to your point, you can start a blog, not have it be SEO, and still have it drive tons of value if, you know, it's a blog that, you know, the customers are reading and it has a voice or whatever that is. So that's a good one. So my next question, have you watched the movie Inception? Oh, I have not. Sorry. Okay, so so no, that's <laughs> fine. I'll give you a quick run. So in Inception, they pretty much go in people's brains. They put these ideas in their brains. So like, I'm going to sell my company. So the person wakes up the next day. They believe it's their idea. They do whatever that action is. So if you could incept one idea in the mind of all the marketers in the world, so tomorrow they wake up and they believe what you just incepted as their own belief, as their own idea, what is that idea or belief? Spend... Uh, the same amount, if not more amount of time repurposing your content and distributing it than you do creating it. Oh, I like that. Have a greater kind of prioritization of uh, repurposing and distribution over content creation. I like that a lot. Now, the final question, what is one thing you do outside of work, outside of business and marketing that then allows you to come back to business and marketing and just be better at your job? Yep, I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge uh, golfer. I love to play golf. I love to get out. Uh, it's one of the the few things that I uh, truly enjoy to do outside. And <laughs> and so, I think for me that's uh, it's one of the golf is such a mental game that if you're not focused on doing it, you will play horribly. Um, and if you are focused on doing it and and focus solely on that, you'll have uh, you'll have a really good round. And so I think for me that has the worst times I've played golf is when I go out and I'm thinking about work and thinking about this and I'm checking social and I'm doing that. And the best rounds I've ever had are when, you know, my phone is in the car and I'm just out and I'm playing and I'm focused on that. Mm -hmm. And so I think being able to detach, being able to get away, being able to just have soul focus, uh, that 1000% helps me come back refreshed, ready to go. And tax awesome. today. Awesome. That's a new answer. Haven't heard that one yet. Golf. Great. I like it. All right, this last section, just open it up for you to plug. You talked a lot about your uh, kind of the content repurposing um, course or product you have. Just if you want to share anything, whether it's about you, metadata, anything, this would be the time for the three to four subscribers, listeners that are still with us. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to learn more about me, you can, I would say, follow me on LinkedIn uh, Justin Simon, just hit me up there. I'm there almost every single day talking about content marketing and content repurposing. If you are interested in learning how you can uh, do content repurposing better and get more out of your content, you can check out contentrepurposingroadmap.com. Um, and that's where the whole course is built out there. You can actually try uh, a free preview of the course. There's a, a audit spreadsheet that you can get. There's a video that goes with it. Um, so you can actually try it before you buy it. Uh, and, and hopefully get some help even without having to put any money down. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I've definitely been thinking heavily about that. I've seen you obviously posting about it today. I read the landing page um, and it does look really interesting. I've, I've been on that repurposing train now too for a bit of how important it is. So yeah, definitely. If you're still listening to us, definitely check that out. Is that uh, in his LinkedIn, you're always obviously posting about uh, repurposing and great content. So I want to just thank you for coming on the show. Uh, Justin, this was a good conversation. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. Yep. This is the end of the podcast.